In this video, we'll look at a nice method to use Excel to test whether a number is prime. This method works for the types of problems that we might ask students to solve using a calculator. So the question that we're going to look at is to find a prime that's greater than 1,000. Actually, to find the smallest prime that's greater than 1,000. So what I'm going to do on the left is going to be the divisors that we check. Potential divisors. Okay, and um, I'm not going to check one or two because those are pretty obvious from looking at the numbers. So let's just start with three and we will check all the odds because we don't need to check the evens. And I'm going to make this go down way past the screen. Okay. And here I will put the quotient after we divide. Okay, and I'm trying to find the greatest prime, I mean the smallest prime that's less than 1,000. So let's try 1,001. So I put in an equation here. I'm going to do equals 1,001 divided by the divisor on the left. So this is an explicit equation. And then I select the cell, get to the fill handle where I have the black cross, and drag down. Maybe that's far enough. And we can see right here that 7 is a divisor, as are 11 and 13, and 77, 91, and 143. Okay, so clearly 1001 is not prime. But let's just take a closer look right now at what we've got in these columns. Something to notice for later. Now, at the top of the list, the divisor is always smaller than the quotient. Everything on the screen, the divisor is smaller than the quotient. But at a certain point, right about here, we start finding that the divisor is bigger than the quotient. And the pairs that we found up here, say 13 and 77, will appear after this green line again in the other order, 77 and then 13. This is important when we want to figure out whether a number is really prime or not. And this is a nice way to see what happens around here, somewhere around um, between 31 and 33, we have the square root of um, 1001. And we can tell students this rule of, oh, check all the divisors up to the square root, but it doesn't always make sense to them. And what, what I'm doing in Excel can be a nice intermediate step to making sense of why that happens. So I just want to clear everything here, clear the highlighting. And now I'm going to change my equation from, I'm just going to change the 1001 to 1003. I know 1002 isn't prime. I'm looking for the next prime. And now I have to drag that formula down again. And I dragged it a little too far, but that's okay. And I can see right now that 1003 is 17 times 59. So that's not prime either. Now, I have to say, it's a little bit of a pain to have to keep typing the formula again and again. So I'm going to use a reference for that instead. I'll put the dividend in this cell. So, the, so let's see, the next one, we just tried 1,003 wasn't prime. 1,005 we know isn't prime. That's clearly divisible by 5. So let's try 1,007. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this formula but instead of putting the actual number in here, what's the square? F6. I'm going to put the square here. And now I need to do dollar sign F, dollar sign 6, because I really mean square F6. I don't ever want that to change. It's going to be the same dividend every time. Okay, and so I drag this formula, but that's the last time I'm going to have to drag it. Let's just go to the end here. 
and I can see that 1007 is not prime either. We have 19 times 53. Now this time when I want to try 1009, I can just type it in this cell and it will automatically update everything, which makes my life easier. Now let's see, I'm looking for whole numbers in the quotient column and I don't see any. So this is a question, how far do I have to check? And this goes back to what we talked about before. If the divisors and quotients would probably appear as pairs, unless, unless we're talking about a perfect square. And so if the pair appears first with the smaller divisor and bigger quotient, it'll appear later with the bigger divisor and smaller quotient. So we just need to look at when this first column starts getting bigger than the second column, and it's, it's in a similar place again right around here and we don't see we really don't have to check that many numbers and of course if we were using a calculator say we wouldn't even need to check nine because we already checked three but introducing this little bit of inefficiency doesn't doesn't really matter for a problem like this because it's so quick to do so yes we have our answer a thousand and nine is prime and as long as we're doing all of this, we could just as well check 1011, which if you know some divisibility tricks, you know it's divisible by 3. How about 1013? 1013, see, we're still pretty close. That's, that's where the barrier is. So 1013 is another prime. And, and so on, and so on. So... This is, students like this method, actually, and I like it because it's useful for some understanding, too. It cuts out a little bit of efficiency, but I think it really, um, it really lays out some of the principles of what we're doing here.